Hey, what's up everybody? It's Alex Booker here again with CodeCast. In this screencast, I'm going to teach you how to get up and running with SQLize. My aim in producing this video is to give you a solid foundation on which we can learn more specific things about SQLize in the future. In preparation for this screencast, I have simply created an empty directory called SQLize Tutorial and opened that directory both in my command line and in my editor of choice, which is Atom. Obviously, if you want to use SQLize for your Node.js applications, you'll need to install the SQLize node module. To do that, I'm going to head over to my command line and firstly create a package.json file using the npm init command with the y flag. This will create a very simple package.json file. But for now, I can write npm install dash dash save SQLize. This will download SQLize into my local node modules folder as you can see, a node modules folder has been created and also create an entry in my package.json file. In addition to installing the SQLize module, you also need to install at least one low level data adapter, depending on the database engine you intend on using. I think the clearest way to teach this is using the documentation, which you can find at sqlizejs.com. There'll be a link in the description. At the time of this recording on the homepage, there is a link for the installation page. Click on it and you'll firstly see instructions to run the command we have already run that installs the SQLize module. Additionally, there is a handful of commands from which you must pick one depending on the database engine that you are using. It's fairly intuitive, right? If you're using Postgres, you should run this command that installs PG and PGH store modules. If you are using MySQL like I am, you should copy and paste this command into your terminal. If you are using SQLite, you should install this module. And if you're using Microsoft SQL Server, you should use this module called Tedious. It's important to note that these modules are never referenced by you directly. They are for internal use by SQLize only. Now that the MySQL data adapter is finished installing, we can go back to our editor and create a new file called app.js. The first thing I want to do is attain a reference to the SQLize module, which I can do using the global require function. Notice how the identifier SQLize has a capital first letter. This is a common convention in JavaScript to indicate to any reader of my code, including yourself, that this is a constructor function and as such must be called using the new operator like so. This constructor function returns an object which effectively represents a connection to the database. It is for that reason that I store the results in a variable called connection. Before this function will execute successfully, however, we must first supply some arguments. Firstly, we need to specify the name of the database that SQL I should connect to. In my case, that's demo underscore schema. Next, you'll want to specify a username for your database in my case, and in many people's cases, that will be root. Finally, you'll want to specify the password for that user. Because this is a tutorial, my password is simply password, but I hope you will all have much more secure passwords. If, like me, you are using MySQL, then supplying these three arguments alone is sufficient. However, if you are using a database engine other than MySQL, for example, Postgres, you'll need to specify an additional argument that takes the form of an object on that object, you'll need to specify a dialect property whose value is equal to the name of the database engine you are using. For example, Postgres or SQLite or any of the other possible values. If I head over to the documentation again, you can see a full list of the possible values. It's also worth mentioning that if you are using SQLite, you may also want to specify a storage property whose value is a path to the SQLite database. If you do not specify a value for the dialect property, SQLite will assume that you are using MySQL. It is for that reason I can return to my editor and safely omit this fourth argument. Now that we have provided SQLite with the information it needs to connect to the database, we can begin to define models using this connection object that the SQLite constructor returned. Rather than typing out the code by hand, I'm simply going to paste in some code that I wrote previously. To define a model using SQLize, you do so using the define function on the connection object. This function takes two arguments. Firstly, it takes the name of the model, which in my case is article. Secondly, it takes an object which represents properties of the model. 
For example, my article will have a title and a body. The values for these properties should be their data types. For example, the title is going to be of type string and the body is going to be of type text. Even though these two data types seem to be the same thing, there is a difference which is that the text data type facilitates a much longer string than the string data type. If you would like to learn about all of the possible data types, head over to the documentation, scroll down to near the bottom, you should see an entry for data types, click it. On this page you can see a list of all of the possible data types. Here's the string data type, as you can see its default length is just 255 characters. If we scroll down a bit more, we can see the text data type which facilitates an unlimited length string. Of course, you won't always just want to represent text, you can also represent integers, which are numbers, as well as things like times and dates. With the model in place, it's now very easy to synchronize your model and the database. To synchronize the database, simply call the sync function on the connection object like so. This function is going to do a couple of things. Firstly, it's going to connect to the database, then it's going to automatically generate SQL that will create a corresponding table in the database. Let's head over to the command prompt and see what happens when we try and run this script. As you can see, we get an error. If I scroll up, you can see that the error reads unknown database demo underscore schema. This is because there is no database with this name, not yet anyway. So let me create that database now. I'll head over to my SQL workbench, connect to my local database and quickly create a new schema called demo underscore schema. Now, when I return to the command line and run the same command, we should see that the program finishes executing with no error. Yep, looks like it worked. Now, if we head back to Workbench and refresh the schema view and expand the demo schema view, you can see that there is now a table called articles. If I right click on this table and click on the menu item entitled select rows, we can see that there is a title and body property which correspond to the title and body properties of our model. What's more, SQLize has taken the liberty of adding an ID primary key column to our table, as well as created ads and updated ad columns that will automatically be updated when you create or update records. The values of these columns represent when the record was created and last updated. If you want to disable these columns, it's entirely possible to do so, and in the next video, I'll show you how. I'll also show you how you can achieve fine grained control over your primary key in case you want to do something custom. So right now we have a table for articles, but that table is clearly empty. Let's change that. Let me start by saying that inserting records into a table using SQLize is very, very simple. There's only one concept that might be a little bit confusing, which is that I'm going to be using JavaScript promises. If you want to learn more about JavaScript promises before continuing, I highly recommend this video by Kyle Robinson Young. There'll be a link in the description. With that out of the way, I'm going to call then on the promise returned by the synchronized function and pass to the then function a callback. Inside of this callback, I'm going to firstly reference the model that we declared above and call on that model a function called create. I'll then pass to that function an object on which I will define a title property and a body property with some dummy text. Notice how these properties match those of the model. I'll save this file. Now watch as I return to the command line and run the program again. As you can see, SQLizer's output of a SQL that it generated, it generated an insert query. If I go to Workbench and refresh this query, you can see that the article has been inserted into the database successfully. Again, inserting a record into a table using SQLite is astoundingly simple. All you have to do is call this create function and pass it an object which models the article. The only thing that might be perceived to be a little bit complicated is the way that we have to call this create function from within this callback function. Let me explain why we have to do that briefly. In a nutshell, this sync function, which creates the tables behind the scenes, might take a long time to finish doing its job. We do not want to attempt to insert a record into a table that doesn't exist. Basically, the only way to know for sure that the tables have been generated before you insert a record is to insert your records from within a callback function, like we're doing here. 
Okay, finally, let's look at retrieving a record back again. It just so happens that in this case, we know the article's ID is free. So what we can do is we can remove this code that creates the record and instead write article dot find by ID. Then we'll specify the ID of the record, which I happen to know is free. And then I'll chain a callback like so, to which I will be passed the article. Then I can write to the console the article's so-called data values. Basically, this article object that you get passed via an argument contains a bunch of additional metadata that we don't really care about. All we really care about is the values of the properties, which we can attain using this data values property. Let's try running this program now and see what happens. So I'll close the previous program and run this again. And as you can see, SQLize is printed to the terminal, the SQL that it generated. As you can see, it generated a select query as well as the result of the query, which is an object with the ID free, title, demo title, and that demi text that we associated with the body. You can also see with the created that and updated that values have been populated. Obviously, you won't always have the benefit of knowing the ID of the record you wish to retrieve. In those cases, you can use the find all method of the model. Don't pass any arguments to that function. And then instead of being passed a single article, we're going to be passed potentially many articles. So I'll pluralize the argument name. And instead of printing out the data values, I'm just going to print out the length of articles, right? So the amount of articles that the query returned. Let's head over to the terminal now and see what this results in. As you can see, it prints out the query that it generated, as well as the length of the articles array that we were passed as an argument, which contains all of the articles. There's only one article in the database, so the length property yields one. You can imagine how in a real application, you might pass this along to a view and render it on a web page, rather than just printing out the length of the array. It's not super feasible to load all of your records into memory as that can be quite taxing on your server, especially if you have a lot of records. So it's very common to implement a technique called pagination where you paginate your content and only load one page into memory at a time. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, but in a future video, I absolutely will. In the next video, we're going to look at how to define more complicated models using some additional features afforded to us by SQLize. If you would like to support CodeCast and be notified when my latest screencasts go live, please don't hesitate to subscribe. I would also really appreciate it if you left a rating and maybe a comment. And if you want to, you can follow me on Twitter at Booker Codes. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video.